Hi everyone! How are you guys doing today? I hope that you are doing safe and fine wherever you are right now as you are watching this video. By the way, I am Hazel and I'll be the one discussing to you about domestic water heating, water heaters, and its type. So let's get into the discussion. In some buildings, hot water comes out from their faucet or their showers because of a process called domestic water heating. Domestic water heating, as I've said, this is a process of heating water for personal or domestic use. So before, whenever there is a cold water, people won't bat that much. They won't take a bath. They would only mask themselves, their body order with perfumes, oil, or just something that would make them smell good. But water heaters were discovered during the Industrial Revolution. The first water heater was discovered and made by Benjamin Wadi on the year 1868. This water heater was using a gas. However, there have been dangers about this water heater because of lack of proper ventilation and a possible leakage of carbon monoxide. But later on, in year 1889, an Arabian mechanical engineer Edwin Wood redesigned and patented the concerns and dangers of Wadi's design. But even though a century turned, running hot water was still considered a luxury. It was only available for those who were well off. But also, as with century turn, there have been various types of water heaters that have been manufactured, which we'll be discussing on the later part of this video. I have mentioned earlier about the word water heater. So what is really water heater? It is basically a device, an appliance or a system that heats water for domestic or personal use of hot water. So what an importance of having a water heater at your home or your building. First, water conservation. One of the key factors associated with a high quality hot water heaters is that it can help in conserving water. Choosing a tank style hot water heater with the right size for home's hot water consumption needs can help in conserving water over time. So there is a type of water heaters where in, there is a needed for a tank wherein you can store your hot water in, in there. So it could really conserve water next energy conservation hot water heating system generally use electricity or gas to heat water changing the energy source that the water system heating uses is a must to conserve energy and save money so your choice of source of energy can help you conserve energy using this water heater and lastly it can give you a hot water on demand. While the right hot water heating system can provide the ability to conserve both water and energy and ultimately can save money over long-term use of hot water, many homeowners will agree that the greatest importance of a water heater is the ability to provide hot water as needed. Of course, you have installed a water heater to home or your building because of your demand of a running hot of water service on your faucet or your showers. Various energy sources for water heaters could be electricity, natural gas, propane, and or oil. Let's go and continue to the different types of water heaters. Water heaters are classified into two main, the tank and the tankless. Tank water heaters gives you a reserve of hot water that is maintained 24 hours a day while a tankless water heater um, produces only on-demand hot water as is needed. Alongside with these two main, they have been identified or they've been manufactured in more seven more types of water heaters. So first thing we have here is a storage tank water heaters. 
A storage tank water heater consists of a storage tank and heating medium. Typically, storage tank sizes include 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 75, 80, 100, and a 120 gallon capacity. It is available in gas, propane, fuel oil, and electric models. As I have said, it requires a storage tank of water. This storage tank water heater stores water for use on demand. Steep pressure drives water flow. As hot water is drawn from the tank, as you open your faucet or your showers, it is replaced by water from the water service. This cools the water contained in the tank. A thermostat is the instrument being used to control the heat inside your storage tanks. It switches the heating medium on when the temperature of the water in the tank has been cooled down below a set point temperature and switches the heater off when the water in the tank reaches the preset temperature start setting. The storage tank is insulated to reduce standby losses. There are also various types of storage tank water heaters. There are three. First, we have the residential storage tank water heaters, the commercial storage tank water heaters, and the ultra-efficient water heaters. The only difference about these three are their capacity. For small residential houses, you will only need this type of storage tank. If only mayroon ka lang tatlo na ginagamit or op na fixtures that, if, that requires a hot water simultaneously, this is perfect for you. This residential storage tank water heater can have a 120 gallons of water for storage. While this commercial storage tank water heaters, of course, this is larger for a or if you have three or more fixtures that is open simultaneous and would need running hot water because this commercial storage tank water heaters can store up to 250 gallons of water. Of course, this ultra efficient water heaters, this is bigger storage tank water heaters. It uses power burners and enhanced heat exchangers to force hot combustion gas into chambers and tubes that are submerged in the storage water. It is vented with plastic pipes that go directly through an outside wall. Because they draw combustion air directly from outside through one of those pipes, their combustion process are sealed off from the occupied space. A storage tank water heaters that uses gas and oil as an energy source may undergo its either chimney power or direct venting. However, electric storage tank water heaters doesn't require any venting. Storage tank water heaters can also be classified under method of venting. Number one, the non-venting or the electric. Number two, naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated water heaters have a fluid that runs vertically through the center of the tank. Products of combustion are vented by relying on the natural buoyancy of the fluid gases. Number three, the power vented. Power vented water heaters use a fan to exhaust fluid gases. And lastly, sealed combustion. Sealed combustion water heaters have supply air and exhaust air connections connections to the outdoors. It does not require any indoor air to operate. There are two types of sealed combustion water heaters. First, some units have a flue up the center of the tank, similar to the power vented water heaters. And the second type of, the, of a unit has a heat exchanger that traps around the tank. Next type of water heater that we have is the instantaneous tankless water heaters. This is sometimes called the demand water heaters because it would only supply hot water on demand or only when you needed it when you only open your faucet. That's the only time that they will heat up your water. 
they did not rely on standby storage in a tank to artificially boost their capacity. Instead, they have a heating device that is activated by the flow of water when a hot water valve is open. Once activated, the heater delivers a constant supply of hot water. The output of the heater, however, limits the rate of the heated water flow. They are more efficient because they do not have any tank standby losses. So I guess this type of water heater is the most common here in the Philippines, while the storage tank type of water heater is more commonly used in the United States. Ito yung makikita nyo madalas sa mga bahay na katabi ng shower nila. Yung maliit lang, para lang siyang box, parang kasing laki ng mga shoe box, then may buttons or may pihitan ng mga numbers. Yan yung pilian mo kung gaano, gaano ba kainit yung tubig na gusto mo. Pag binuksan mo yung shower mo or yung grip mo, it would still take you a minute or two bago tuluyan na uminit yung tubig na lalabas. After mo i-open yung water heater mo sa specific number or gano'ng kainit yung gusto mo. Yung mga gano'ng na makikita mo sa ibang mga banyo, it is powered by electric. Kaya ito may saksakan sa katabi nila. Minsan, single point of use lang siya. Yung mga painit niya lang is yung shower at yung tubo na connected dun sa gripo sa uba ng shower. Or minsan din, mayroon din naman iba na hanggang sa lavatory sa labas is kasama sa water heater na iyon. But these in instantaneous water heaters are also available in nat natural gas, LP, and electric models like the one else of the common in the Philippines. But also they come in variety of sizes for different applications such as a whole house water heater, a hot water source for a remote bathroom or hot tub or as a boiler to provide hot water for a home heating system. So, meron din naman malaki sa ibang bansa na kaya rin naman yung magpainit ng lahat ng, ng fixtures sa buong bahay o building. But, yun nga, since, since sa Philippines, yung makikita nyo lang is common doing yung naka-attach malapit sa gripo or sa shower kasi hindi naman super necessary dito sa Philippines ang magkaroon ng water heater considering that we are in a country na having a warm or hot climate. Next type of water heaters we have is the circulating water heaters. This circulating water heater consists of a separate storage tank that stores water heated by a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger may be a separate unit that is heated by steam or hot water from a boiler or may be contained in a boiler. So, Para lang siyang, you have a storage tank and then you will have a, another devi device or unit that you would use to heat up the water inside your storage tank. Next thing we have is the tankless coil and indirect water heaters. These tankless coil water heaters, when your faucet is turned on, water is heated as it flows through the heating coil or heat exchanger installed in the main furnace or boiler. It is different from the tankless water heaters kung ka sa instantaneous kasi yun, you have meron kang device yung parang meron kang box kung saan doon dadaan yung tubig. Ito naman, pag inopen mo yung tankless din siya hindi mo kailangan ng storage tank. And, however, yung water na pag inopen mo yung faucet mo yung tubig dadaan mo na siya sa furnace mo or sa isang boiler. During cold, colder months, the tankless coil works well because the heating system is used regularly. This is suitable for countries having a winter season. And it is also less efficient during the warmer months and in warmer climates when the boiler is used frequently or not at all. That is, the boiler must operate when hot water is needed. So, it is only advisable for countries having a winter season. While the indirect water heater, this requires a water tank. Kung kanina, yung tankless coil water heater, hindi niya kailangan ng storage tank. This requires a storage tank. But this is also connected to your boiler or furnace. The heated water then flows to an insulated storage tank because the boiler does not need to operate as frequently. This system is more efficient than the tankless coil. Mas okay siya compared sa kanina na tankless coil. 
When indirect water heater is used with a highly efficient boiler, the combination may provide one of the least expensive methods of water heating. Next, we have the heat pump water heater type. This heat pump water heater is like a reverse refrigerator. It extracts outdoor air to heat water. Kung ang refrigerator naman, kumukha siya ng hangin. Tapos, yung loob niya, lumalamig. Ito namang heat pump water heater. Baliktad siya, reverse refrigerator. Kasi nga, when we extract energy from outdoor air, it would produce hot water very efficiently. Heat pump hot water is used an electric motor to run a compressor. The compressor draws a gaseous refrigerant through an evaporator, raising its pressure until it liquefies in the condenser. This heat pumping process heats the condenser and cools the evaporator. In removing heat from air, the heat pump both cools and dehumidifies the air, thus helping also to meet cooling needs. However, these heat pumps, kasi nga, nag extract siya ng outdoor air, most recommended siya for in places or countries having a temperature of 40 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So, most recommended siya in countries having warmer climates. Next thing we have, the solar water heaters. Of course, it collects energy from the sun because of the word solar. It includes a collector mounted on the roof or in a clean area of the yard, a separate storage tank near the conventional heater in the home, connecting pipes and an electronic controller. The solar system preheats the water before it reaches the conventional water heater. So it looks like the same from the previous storage tank water heaters. The only difference that it gets its energy from, from the sun. And the last thing that we have is the, the superheater. The superheater is an attachment to an air conditioner or heat pump that allows waste heat from the device to assist in heating domestic water. In hot climates, a superheater can provide most of a home's hot water. So ito naman yung superheater. It is also a device na kinakabit, malapit, or katabi ng air conditioner. Kasi di ba yung aircon, lumubugo siya ng mainit na hangin. Yun yung gagamitin para makainit siya ng tubig sa loob ng iyong tank or yung your pipes. And that's all the seven types of water heaters. First, we have the storage tank water heaters, the instantaneous tankless water heaters, or the in-demand water heaters, circulating water heaters, the tankless coil and indirect water heaters, the heat pump water heaters, solar water heaters, and the super heaters. Energy efficiency is a standardized measure used to express the efficiency of residential heaters. It represents the amount of heat required to warm up hot water for a typical home in a year, divided by the amount of energy input into the heater to warm that water. A water heater with an EF of 0.60 transfers 60% of the energy it consumes to the hot water. The remaining energy is vented outdoors as waste heat. The higher the EF, the more energy efficient the water heater and the less energy consumed. Naturally, a spirated water heater units have the lowest EF, typically below 0.60. Power vented water heaters have lower standby losses and therefore a higher EF that range from 0.58 to 0.63. Sealed combustion water heaters with a flue in the center of the tank will have an EF as high as 0.65. Those with a heat exchanger that wraps around the tank can have an EF over 0.80. Electric resistance water heaters have an EF ranging from 0.7 and 0.95. Gas water heaters from 0.5 to 0.6 with few high efficiency models ranging around 0.8. Ultra efficient water heaters have thermal efficiencies of 94% and PF of 0.94. Oil water heaters from 0.7 and 0.85.
heat pump water heaters from 1.5 to 2.0 instantaneous tankless water heater with an electronic ignition will have an EF above 0.90. Instantaneous water heaters will always have a higher EF in comparison to storage water heaters because they do not have um, standby losses. Commercial heaters are not rated for overall efficiency. They are rated for thermal efficiency, which represents the portion of input gas energy that goes toward heating the water drawn from the tank. Its thermal efficiency ranging from 78 to 80%. The instantaneous energy efficiency of a heat pump water heater system depends on incoming water temperature. Intake air temperature, the heat transfer characteristic of the heat pump, and various conductive and convective losses throughout. There is no simple index that accounts for both outputs and describes overall heat pump water heater efficiency. As a result, the heat pump water heater industry relies on two indexes of energy efficiency, coefficient of performance or COP, which is favored by manufacturers of large heat pump water heater systems. The EF of a typical heat pump water heater will be about 2.2. What is coefficient of performance or COP? COP is measure of instantaneous energy output of a system in comparison with its instantaneous energy input. Standby losses and the interaction of changing water and air temperature are not reflected in measurements of COP. The COP of a standard hot water system is close to 1, and the COP of a typical heat pump water heater may be 3. Hot water circulating systems A hot water circulating system continuously circulates hot water from the water heating unit through the hot water supply piping and back to the water heater through hot water circulating piping. This ensures that hot water is always available at the taps, thus avoiding the need to run water for a long time to obtain water at the desired temperature. There are three types of hot water circulating strategies. First is the continuous recirculating. From the word itself, continuous, which means continuing without stopping, the water is constantly recirculated from the water heater through the piping. This type of system is best suited for buildings having round-the-clock occupancy. Example of these buildings are the hospitals and multi-unit residential buildings. The second one is the timed recirculating. Timed recirculating involves use of an electronic or electromechanical timer to shut off circulation of hot water when the building is not occupied. This shutdown would apply to commercial, institutional, and industrial buildings that are closed at night and or on weekends. Nighttime housekeeping and maintenance operations should not be neglected when considering shutdown periods. The last one is the thermostatically controlled recirculating. Thermostatically controlled recirculating relies on a sensor located at a remote location in the recirculating line, which senses water temperature and activates the recirculating pump when water temperature drops below a predetermined setting. Determining water heater size Hot water use is not spread out over the entire day. Instead, domestic use of hot water tends to peak in the morning hours and again in the early evening or supper time. As a result, a water heating system must be designed to have sufficient capacity to provide hot water during periods of peak use. An accepted method of determining the maximum demand on a water heater is to determine peak usage during a particular time of day. For single and two-family dwelling units, this peak occurs during the morning or early evening. Refer to Table 13.16 for typical household demands by use. So, example, estimate the peak hot water demand of a household that has a morning routine of 2 showers, 3 hands or face washings, 4 teeth brushings, food preparation, and minor dishwashing. So, in Table 13.16, typical household hot water demands based on use United States Department of Energy. 
So, yung naka-highlight po, ito yung gagamitin natin para sa example. So, the given is 2 showers, 3 hands or face washings, 4 teeth brushings, food preparation, and minor dishwashing. So, may 2 showers. Hahanapin natin sa hot water ang per use ang galon niya. So, may 20. So, 2 times 20 is equal to 40. So, may 3 hand or face washings na may 4 gallons. So, 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So, sa 4, may 4 teeth brushings, which is may 2 gallons. So, 4 times 2 is equal to 8. So, next is food preparation. May 5 gallons. So, 1 times 5 is equal to 5. So, minor dishwashing, may 4 gallons. So, my 1 times 4 is equal to 4. So, 40 plus 12 plus 8 plus 5 plus 4. So, the total peak hot water demand is 69 gallons. So, typical hot water demands for various types of non-residential buildings are provided in Table 13.17. An accepted method of determining the maximum demand on a water heater is to determine peak usage. So, another example. Estimating the hot water demand of a junior high school serving 850 students and 65 staff. Table 13.17, typical hot water demands for various types of buildings. Hahanapin natin yung sinabi sa example na junior high school. So in this table, may junior and senior high school na per student which is 1.5 yung maximum per hour niya. So 1.5 GPM per student times yung sinabi na 850 students is equal to 1 to 75 GPM. Sizing storage tank water heaters. Residential water heaters are typical sized based on their first R rating or FHR. This rating is contained on the U.S. Department of Energy Guide label found on all water heaters. The FHR relates to the gallons of hot water available for one hour of peak demand. It is the maximum output of the water heater over an hour. In gallons of hot water in a 100 degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise, the FHR is the sum of the standby hot water found in the tank plus the capacity of the heater to heat water during the that first hour. Typically, standby water is taken as the 70% of the tank capacity. So, the formula is FHR, which is in gallons, is equal to 70% of tank capacity, which is also in gallons, plus the recovery rate, which is in gallons per hour. What is recovery rate? Tank capacities are usually available on the water heater nameplate. Recovery rate is indicated less frequently but can be approximated from the heater input rating. Recovery rate is the quantity of water that the burner or element can heat to a 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius increase in one hour. This is referred to as a 100 degrees temperature rise which means that the water temperature is increased 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So, for example, if a burner can take 40 gallons of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4.4 degrees Celsius water and raise its temperature to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius in one hour, that burner or heater has a 40 gallon recovery rate. So, nag-increase ang 40 degrees to 140 degrees na dagdagan siya ng 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Average gas-fired residential and light commercial heater sizes fall in the range of 30,000 to 75,000 BTU per hour, which equates to a recovery rate of about 27 to 68 gallons per hour. For a natural gas-fired water heaters, multiplying the burner input rating by a 0.0009 can approximately recovery rate, example given, a 35,000 BTU per hour burner has a recovery rate of 35,000 times 0.0009 is equal to 31.5 gallons. Water heaters powered by electricity will have recovery rates of about 1 gallon per hour per 250 watts. 
A common residential electric water heater is rated at 3,000 to 4,500 watts, which would be a recovery rate of about 12 to 18 gallon per hour. The recovery rate of a gas-fired water heater is typically about double the rate of electric-powered units having the same storage tank size. To compensate and provide a suitable FHR, electric water heater storage tanks are typically larger. In sizing a storage tank type water heater, the FHR of a water heater must meet or exceed the peak hot water demand. So this is Table 13.18. It is a guide to selecting the minimum recommended gas-fired storage tank water heater size, which is in gallons. Table 13.19, it provides specifications for selected storage tank water heaters. So, sizing storage tank water heaters. Instantaneous water heaters are selected based on the amount of hot water needed to meet the design load or peak instantaneous demand in GPM or liter per minute at a specific water temperature rise and other criteria. The design load, the flow rate of the instantaneous water heater, is determined by adding flow rates of fixtures used simultaneously. The following assumptions on water flow for various residential fixtures may be used to determine the size of a unit. Sets 0.75 GPM to 2.5 GPM, low flow shower heads 1.2 GPM to 2 GPM, older standard shower heads 2.5 GPM to 3.5 GPM, clothes washers and 1 GPM to dishwashers 2 GPM. Example, size an instantaneous water heater to meet the following conditions. One hot water faucet open with a flow rate of 0.75 GPM or 2.84 liter per minute. One person showering using a shower head with a flow rate of 2.5 GPM or 9.46 liter per minute. An inlet water temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius. Water must be heated to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. The design load is found by adding the 0.75 gallons plus 2.5 gallons which is equal to 3.25 gallons. The required temperature rise is found by subtracting 120 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees Fahrenheit which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. An instantaneous water heater with a flow rate of no less than 3.25 gallon per minute or 12.3 liter per minute at a temperature rise of 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 44 degrees Celsius should be selected. Faster flow rates or cooler inlet water, temp water supply temperatures will reduce the water temperature available. Using low flow shower heads and water conserving faucets are a good idea with instantaneous water heaters. Most instantaneous water heaters are rated for flow rates at a variety of inlet water temperatures or temperature rises. A good assumption in design of instantaneous water heaters is that the incoming potable water temperature is no warmer than 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. A temperature of 35 degrees to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 degrees to 4 degrees Celsius should be used in cold climates. Water must typically be heated to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius for most residential uses. To determine the required temperature rise needed, subtract the incoming water temperature from the desired output temperature. The needed temperature rise is typically at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. Table 13.21 provides test results of a single instantaneous water heater. So, this is Table 13.21, test results of flow rates at various rises in temperature for a selected residential gas-fired instantaneous or tankless water heater based on an inlet temperature of 66 degrees Fahrenheit, 19 degrees Celsius. With lower supply temperature, the flow rate would be lower at the same delivery temperatures. 
the heater modulates the delivery of heat from 19,000 to 180,000 BTU per hour or 5.6 to 56, 53 kgs in 13 increments according to inlet water temperature and hot water demand. Sizing a large multifamily water heating system A suite 1 and 2 family water heaters, a hot water system must be designed to provide a sufficient supply of hot water for use by building occupants during peak periods of use. In larger buildings, it is less likely that a large share of plumbing fixtures will be in use at a given time. In large multifamily dwellings, such as apartments or condominiums with 10 or more units, hot water demand tends to peak between 6 and 9 a.m. and again 5, between 5 and 8 p.m. An approximation method used to determine hot water demand in large multifamily buildings 10 or more dwelling units is based on the demand unit or DU. For apartments or condominiums, a DU is counted for each bathroom and clothes washing machine served by the water heating system. For apartments of, or condominiums with 10 or more units, the formula is maximum probable demand or MPD of hot water in gallon per hour, MPD is equal to 350 plus 11 DU. This expression assumes 11 gallon per hour for each demand unit plus a 350 gallon per hour reserved capacity. Example, estimate the peak hot water demand of a 24 unit condominium having a single water heating system. Each unit has two bathrooms and there are four clothes washing machines in the common area. So, 24 condominiums each having 2 bathrooms, so 24 times 2 is 48 DU. 4 clothes washers, so 4 DU. The total demand unit is equal to 40, 52 DU. MPD is equal to 350 plus 11 DU. Substitute 52 DU, so MPD is equal to 350 plus 11 times 52 is equal to 922 gallon per hour. A hot water boiler is typically sized to heat water for buildings containing 10 or more dwelling units. It is customary to include a storage tank with the boiler to act as a reserve for times when instantaneous demand exceeds boiler capacity. The size of the storage tank is again based on the number of DUs served by the water heating system. So this is table 13.23a and table 13.23b. The minimum storage tank capacity in gallons is equal to STC is equal to DU times gallon per DU. Example, calculate the minimum storage tank size for a water heating system for the 24 unit condominium described in the previous example. Select a tank size based on the height of 7 feet to allow ceiling clearance. From the previous example, the total DU is equal to 52 DU. Table 13.22 Water Heating Demand Units or DU versus the Storage Tank Capacity per Demand Unit. From Table 13.22, the 52 DU should be computed at 15 gallons per DU. STC is equal to DU times gallon per DU. So, from table 13.22 kanina, yung gagamitin natin is 15 na gallon per demand unit. So, 52 times 15 is equal to 780 gallon minimum. From table 13.23, makikita natin yung intersection ng 7 feet and 54 inches diameter which is equal to 840. So, 54 inches diameter by 7 feet 840 gallon tank is acceptable. Table 13.24 provides capacities of selected gas-fired water heating boilers. To meet the 922 gallon per hour demand, for example, a gas-fired boiler with a capacity of 900,000 BTU per hour input or 960 gallons per hour at the 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise could be selected. Table 13.24 Makikita natin yung input na 900,000 BTU per hour 
and yung intersection niya with 90 degrees Fahrenheit is 960. So, kaya nasabi ganina, 960 gallon per hour. An alternate solution would be to presume that some of the 840 gallon storage tank capacity from the previous example could be shared over the 3 hour peak demand period. So, paano na mangyayari yun? Yung 840 gallon na nakuha kanina, i-divide natin siya sa 3 hours which is equal to 280 gallon per hour. Therefore, the boiler capacity can be decreased based on 922 gallon per hour, our demand minus 280 ga gallon per hour or 642 gallon per hour. At a 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise, a gas-fired boiler with a capacity of 650,000 BTU per hour input, 693 gallon per hour would be selected. The alternate solution is more cost-effective solution because of a lower initial cost and lower operating costs. It is, however, a less conservative approach to design. Distribution systems Hot water generated and stored centrally will have to be distributed around the site. There are many opportunities for improving water efficiency in a typical hot water installation. Figure 4, Potential Areas for Water Efficiency Improvements in a Typical Hot Water Installation. So, nagpapakita dito sa figure 4 ang flow ng water from the water heater. There are 6 considerations to improving the water efficiency in a typical hot water installation. First is to identify where hot water is produced how much 1 cubic meter of hot water costs, and calculate its embedded carbon value. Second is to check the pressure relief or the thermostatic valves and overflows. The third one is to establish whether hot water is needed for each point of use or could the cold water suffice. Fourth is to identify any areas where it may be more efficient to use point of use water heaters. Five, establish whether the length of dead legs or pipe diameter can be reduced. And the last one is to review each point of use and assess whether hot water consumption could be eliminated or reduced. The water distribution system itself can affect water efficiency. Ideally, hot water should be pumped around a well-insulated main distribution ring with very short lengths of take-off pipe work to the point of use. Further considerations to improve efficiency are given below. Direct or dead lag supply systems. If points of hot water use are some distance from the storage tank, then long lengths of pipe, known as dead legs, will be required to serve them. It is likely that the water in the dead legs will cool when not in use. When hot water is required, this cooled water will have to be run to waste at the point of use until water of the desired temperature is obtained. It is recommended that these dead legs will be kept as short as possible and not more than those shown in Table 1. So Table 1 is entitled Maximum Recommended Lens of Uninsulated Hot Water Pipes. If a 15mm pipe is supplying a hot water top and there is a 10 meter dead leg, then 1.5 liters of water will have to be run to drain until water at the desired temperature is obtained. If the top is used 20 times a day, 5 days a week, and for 50 weeks of the year, this will waste 7,500 liters or 7.5 cubic meter of water that has been heated and allowed to cool. Water in dead leg will cool down but heat loss can be minimized by ensuring the pipe is well insulated. Pipe size, although the amount of water lost through dead legs can be minimized by reducing pipe lengths, there will always be a small amount remaining in the pipe. This can be minimized by reducing the pipe's diameter to the minimum acceptable or taking into account maximum velocities and pressure losses. The volume of water per meter of pipe of different diameters is shown in Table 2. For example, if a 10-meter length of 28mm pipe was used to supply a tap, 
this would need 5.4 liters of water to run to waste before hot water is available. But only 1.5 liters would be wasted if a 15 mm pipe was used. In this example, using a smaller diameter pipe would result in a saving of 3.9 liters of water per use. If the tap was used 20 times a day, this would save 78 liters per day. Insulation. So, sinabi ko kanina na mahalaga yung insulation para ma-minimize yung heat loss. The primary objective of installing insulation is to save energy by minimizing heat loss from hot water pipes or heat again in cold pipes. Good insulation means that the water at the point of use is likely to be nearer to the correct temperature than without insulation and the amount of water that is run to waste is reduced or prevented. An example of well-insulated pipe work is shown in Figure 5. So, sa Figure 5, makikita natin yung well-labeled and well-insulated hot water. Water Heater a water heater usually fully automatic has a storage tank with one or more electric heating elements and with operating and safety controls. Edwin Drood, a Norwegian mechanical engineer, was the inventor of the automatic storage water heater in 1889. A water heater consists of the following parts. A heavy inner steel tank that holds the hot water, insulation surrounding the tank, a dip tube to let cold water into the tank, a pipe to let hot water out of the tank, a thermostat to control the temperature of the water inside the tank, heating elements to heat the water, a drain valve that allows you to drain the tank to replace the elements or move the tank, a pressure relief valve, a sacrificial anode rod to help keep the steel tank from corroding. The cold water supply line connects to the water heater, typically on top of the appliance. Instead of dumping the water on top of the hot water in the tank, a dip tube carries the cold water down to the bottom of the tank. The outbound hot water line takes the water off the top of the tank. That way when hot water is drawn out, it is at full temperature. Only after most of the hot water has been used do you start to get the hot and cold water mix. When you open a hot water tap, the water pressure from the cold water supply line pushes the water out of the water heater and refills the tank with cold water. As cold water enters the tank, the thermostat senses the lower temperature and triggers the heating mechanism. The thermostat controls the temperature of the water inside the tank. Normally, you can set the temperature between 120 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It is generally recommended that you keep the temperatures between 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, especially if there are children living in the house to prevent scalding. It also saves energy. Well, that's all we have for today and I hope you get and learn something from us for today. If you have any questions, clarifications, suggestions or additional information, comments about our report, Please not hesitate to post it in the comments and we will try to reach out to you as soon as we can. So, thank you and God bless. Stay safe everyone and hope to see you all soon. Bye. Peace out.